hello students the topic which we are going to discuss today that is cash budget so what is the expected accomplishment of today's session first of all we will discuss what is cash budget then we will discuss about the importance of cash budget then we will discuss about what is the difference between cash budget and statement of cash flow then we will discuss the suggested format of cash budget then we will discuss some numerical questions to understand this subject so what is cash budget cash budget is a forecast about three things first of all about cash receipts second thing is about cash payments and what would be the cash position for a certain time period means how much receipts you will have for that particular time period and how many payments you have made you will make make and how much cash you may have at the end of that particular time period so it is always prepared for a shorter time span of period as compared to other budgets like we have discussed in our previous session when we were talking about master budget we discussed about production budget about sales budget etc so cash budget time period is relatively less as compared to the other budgets so it is mostly prepared it is mostly prepared for what for months for week or even though it can be prepared on daily basis so its time span is lower as compared to other budgets why this happened the reason is by having a short span you can forecast in a better way about your cash movements what is the importance of cash budget this is very important thing first of all it enables the management to determine the timing when there is a surplus or shortage of cash so you can determine the exact time when you have any surplus of cash or when you have shortage of cash so you can uh, make a better planning about the usage of that second thing is it also determines for the management the quantum the quantity of surplus or shortage of cash over there when in first uh, point we discussed when there is a surplus or shortage here we are going to discuss how much surplus or shortage you have of cash then we uh, it enables the management to determine the period for which the situation of shortage or surplus is likely to continue it is how long so in first point we discuss from the point of time let's say it's first of january you have surplus how long say it is for 30 days you have surplus how much quantity let's assume it's 1000 dollar so it helps you to determine the starting point of your surplus or your shortage of cash quantity and for the time period it also helps the management to determine the borrowing schedule by comparing the shortage situation and the surplus situation you can schedule 
how much borrowing you, you required for how long time period when you have surplus funds to repay your borrowing etc it also helps the management to determine the amount to finance any new project by having the estimates of surplus cash it also helps the management to take advantage of early set, uh, uh, settlement discount to how if you have surplus of funds then there is a possibility that uh, by utilizing that surplus fund you will avail the benefit of early settlement discount uh, to get some uh, concession in your total payables so this was the uh, importance of cash budget how cash budget is different from statement of cash flow cash budget can be prepared for a shorter time period it can be prepared for month for week or for quarter but mostly cases statement of cash flow is prepared for the accounting period let's say it's for a, normally one year so this is the first difference between cash budget and statement of cash flow cash budget is prepared before the preparation of what other financial statements with would be statement of uh, financial position statement of uh, changes in equity so cash budget is prepared before these financial statements but to prepare statement of cash flow we are using those financial statements so that's why statement of cash flow is always prepared is always prepared after the preparation of statement of financial position and statement of uh, profit and loss and statement of changes in equity cash budget don't have standard format so it can be prepared in any format which is suitable to you but for statement of cash flows you have standard format with where you have two methods indirect method and direct method but both methods have standard format so cash budget don't have standard format and statement of cash flow have standard format so these are the major differences between statement of cash flow and uh, cash budget this is the suggested or proposed format of what cash budget so organizations can modify it according to their own particular needs so you have opening balance then you have cash receipts figures so total cash available for use let's assume it's for on quarter basis quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four it could be for a month for a week week one week two week three and so on and then total figure then you have cash disbursement net surplus or deficit and closing balance so keep in mind the closing balance of one time period let's assume this is the closing balance of quarter one it would be the opening balance of next time period so it would be the opening balance of quarter two now quarter two closing balance will be opening balance of quarter three and so on so this is one thing which is important but keep in mind this is not a standard format organizations can change it according to their own needs okay now this is something about cash receipts which you can even do incorporate in a same format or you can do it separately you may have 
cash sales you may have some receipts from your debtors against your credit sales then from debtors these both are from sales then you may sell your capital assets so from the uh, you may have sale proceeds of your capital assets you can issue shares and bonds so all these this is not a final list these are some possible examples of your cash receipts but students must have to be familiar with first two cash sales and receipts from debtors you are supposed to expect the calculations about these two in every question so this is the total receipt which we will incorporate in our major format in our main format then we have payments over their cash purchases payments to creditors against credit purchases other operating payments expenses payments like rent payments like uh, salaries payments etc by like utility bills payments repayment of loans you may have to repay your loans then you may have some tax related payments or interest payments which is called so called finance cost then you may make payment to uh, your shareholders as a dividend payment so all these could be uh, your outflows so you will incorporate the total of cash payments in your main uh, budget you can again do the same calculation in your main format or you can do it separately okay so this is the format this is proposed again i am emphasizing that this is the proposed format it's not a standard format let's discuss one example following uh, information prepare uh, cash budget for the month of january to april budgeted purchases january february march april budgeted sales for every month wages to be paid to worker rupees 5000 each month balance at the bank on 1st january 8000 so this is the opening balance opening balance you have how much 8000 it has been decided by the management that in case of deficit funds within the limit of 10000 if you have 10000 deficiency of funds then you will made the arrangement of bank overdraft uh, but if your deficit exceeding 10000 but limits to 42000 in that case you will issue debentures loan notes if your deficit funds exceeding then 42000 then you will issue uh shares okay but over there you will consider the limit of your authorized capital because you can't issue more shares than your authorized capital limit so let's start with the discussion opening balance was 8000 we are making the assumptions that our sales and purchases are cash transactions so cash sales we have how much 60000 for january total available cash for use is 68000 then we have purchases of 48000 which is outflow which is disbursement then we have wages payment of 15 5000 so our net cash surplus or deficit is 15000 so it is surplus not a deficit because it is without brackets if it is in the brackets then your outflows are more than your inflows so here you have 15000 surplus which would be your closing balance of this period as i discussed earlier that the closing period uh, balance of one period 
will be the opening balance of next period. So fifteen thousand closing balance of January will be the opening balance of February. So starting with that, forty thousand is a cash sales for February. So total available cash uh, for you is fifty five thousand. But your disbursement is. Eighty thousand against purchases and five thousand against wages. So your net surplus or deficit is deficit which is thirty thousand. Now we have discussed earlier, like if your deficit is within the bracket of ten thousand to forty two thousand, you will issue the debentures. So we issued the pensions for thirty thousand and made the arrangement. Now there is closing balance zero because you just issued the pensions to uh, compensate your deficit. So for March, your uh, opening balance of cash is zero. Your cash sales are forty-five thousand. So total cash available for use is forty-five thousand, and then your disbursements are eighty-one thousand against your purchases, and five thousand against wages. So in total, your cash disbursement is eighty-six thousand. In that case, your deficit is for forty-one thousand because you require you require total cash. Uh, uh, for disbursement is eighty six thousand, and the cash generated during the period from your cash sales is forty five thousand. So it forty for forty one thousand, you will again issue the debentures, and from there you will get the inflow, and again your closing balance will be zero, and for April it would be again zero because your closing balance of Uh, March is zero, so that's why the opening balance of April is also zero. Then you have again cash sales of forty thousand, so total available cash for you is forty thousand. From this cash, you require to make the payments for ninety thousand for purchases and five thousand for wages. So your net deficit is for fifty-five thousand. Now it is in the bracket where you will issue the shares because it's more than forty-two thousand. So you issued the fifty-five thousand shares by issuing these shares. You compensated the amount to cover up your deficit. So this is the way you will prepare. You are preparing the budget. So from this budget, we can. Conclude that the cash which you are generating from your operating activities is less than what is the requirement of cash for your uh, disbursements. So in that case, it is giving the indication when we have deficit uh, deficiency, for how much amount we have deficiency. And for how long time period we have a deficiency? So in this way, it is uh, working as a planning tool. But in total figures, you have opening balance. Then you will put total your receipts, which is one eighty five thousand available for use total funds. Total disbursement one twenty six thousand. Uh, uh, sorry, two ninety nine. Plus uh, twenty thousand, it is three hundred and nineteen thousand total disbursement, and by comparing that three hundred and nineteen thousand with one hundred and ninety-three thousand, you calculated your total deficit, which you arranged seventy-one thousand by issuance of debentures and fifty-five thousand for the share by issuance of shares. So your total column is giving you the Total picture of these four months, which is from January to April. So in this way, we are going to 
prepare our cash budget. Now I'm going to discuss one specific question which is related to MCQ sections, especially this is the exam retired question of CMA the USA exam of part one. Okay, so uh, like, but you may feature in other sort of exams, uh, like uh, the exam of ICM, maybe Pakistan, like in, in uh, any other exams, you may have some examples. Uh, so this sort of question you can expect over there. What is the question? Historically, Pine Hill would product has no significant bad debt. So there is no bad debt experience with its customer. Cash sales have accounted for 10% of total sales and payments for the credit sales have been received as follows. So this is the pattern. This is about cash receipts, cash inflows. 40% of credit sales in the month of sale 30% of credit sales in the first subsequent month, 25% in the second subsequent month, and 5% credit sales in the third subsequent month. So question is, what is the forecasted cash inflow for Pine Hill Wood product for May? Is important. Now, he is asking us about May. So first of all, we will start from the May data and then we will for backward uh, by identifying the relevant data. This is the solution. So first of all, cash sales for May. First of all, cash sales for May. Total sales of May is 85,000. And out of that, 10% is cash sales. So multiply by 10%. So this is 8,500. So the cash receipt in the month of May would be from cash sales of, uh, would be of 8,500 from your cash sales. Now, from your credit sales, now this is important, like 40% of credit sales, this is very important, 40% of credit sales. So first of all, bifurcate between cash sales and credit sales. It is mentioned that 10% of your total sales is cash sales. It means rest of 90% is your credit sales. So I have multiplied uh, uh, the credit sales of May, May 85,000 with 90% to calculate total credit sales. So 85,000 times 90% is credit sales. Now we got the credit sales figure. By having this figure, now we will multiply it with the percentage which is supposed to receive in the same month, 40% of the credit sales in the month of sales. From May, we multiplied it with, it with 40%. So it is 30,600. Keep in mind, we need data for month of May. Now, he is saying that 30% of credit sales in the first subsequent month. It means the sales from April, the, the credit sales of April, we will get 30% in May. Am I right? Yes. So for that purpose, what we did, we multiplied 80,000, the total sales figures of April with 90% to calculate credit sales figure. Then with 30%, because 30% will receive in May. So it is 21,600. Then he said that 25% of credit sales in second subsequent month. So from March, from March figure, we will get how much? 
25% in May. So 70,000 uh, uh, sales of mark total multiply with 90% find out the credit sales figure then 25% because March second month subsequent month would be April and then May so it is 15,750 then from February 5% of credit sales in third subsequent month so February total sales is 65,000 and out of that 90% is again credit sales will multiply it with 90% to find out the credit sales figure then we multiply it with 5% okay to calculate the total cash we will receive in May from the sales which we have made in the month of uh, February 65,000 so this is the total figure now January sales 40% of credit sales we received in January 30% we received in February 25% we received in March and 5% we received in April so January data is irrelevant so this is the important thing for your exam point of view that sometimes you may have you may have irrelevant data in your question so be vigilant during your exam so the total figure is 79,375 so that is option C so our right answer is what is the forecasted cash, cash inflow for the month of May that is 79,375 so this is the way examiner can test the topic of cash budget it could be about cash payments or like that uh, thank you very much for your time i hope you may have enjoyed my lecture uh, so uh, kindly subscribe my youtube channel and uh, press bell icon to get notifications about my latest lectures again thank you very much